into God's presence with joy. Come into God's presence with hope. Come into God's presence with longing. Come into God's presence with love. In God, we have an inheritance that is imperishable, that cannot be defiled, an inheritance that never fails, and an inheritance that brings new life. Welcome to our Sunday worship service, the second Sunday in the season of Easter. Let us pray. God of signs and wonders, breathe new life into us this day, that our spirits may awaken to the joy and the hope of our glorious inheritance through the living Christ. Clear our vision, Holy One, that we may see the promise of Easter in the stirrings of this precious earth and in the life energy flowing through our bodies. Help us find the faith to believe where we have not seen, that others may see in our living and our loving the glory of the risen Christ. Amen. Please join us at home if you can. Our first hymn is Breathe on Me, Breath of God, which is 420 in the United Methodist Hymnal. Please be, uh, uh, join me in prayer at this time in our prayer concerns for our, during this COVID-19 uh, pandemic, this virus we're fighting, all fighting, and for the loss of loved ones, for the uh, Lisa Herring family, those that are in 
garden. This, we're all in, struggling through this, this COVID-19 virus. Those who are on the front lines and those who are ill and sick with the virus. God, our Heavenly Father, we just want to come to you in prayer this morning and pray that you would comfort the Lisa Herring and the fam Herring family and the loss of their loved one. We pray that you'd be with all of our, those who are in the front lines of, of caring for those. There are doctors or nurses caring for the sick and for those who are sick with the virus. And we just ask you to your watch care and protection over them and your strength in them. And be with the, those who are sick, those in the care facilities. Let them know of your loving presence, Heavenly Father, that even though their loved ones not be, might not be able to come in and see them, let them know that they are there in spirit with them. Yeah, and we are with them in prayers and thoughts. And, you know, Heavenly Father, we, we just commit this whole thing to you. We just ask your, your wisdom, your, your watch care and protection over our president and his cabinet and all watch care and protection over our congressman. Keep them safe, give them wisdom with our governors and all in leadership. We just pray and we can ask for your continued mercy upon us, your grace and your mercy. We just commit these things to you, Heavenly Father. They, we look to you, there. there's only we can do, Lord, in this time. Such a, such a, a struggle, such a, such a time as this. May we all, those who love you, those who know you, those who might not have considered you before, Father God, may our hearts be turned to you and find your loving grace and your peace that passes all understanding, that guards our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me in our next hymn, Turn Your Eyes Upon Jesus. We have a hymnal. It is number 349.
Our scripture reading today is from 1 Peter chapter 1. Praise to God for a living hope. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade. This inheritance is kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed in the last time. In all this, you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that the proven genuineness of your faith of greater worth than gold, which perishes even though refined by fire, may result in praise, glory, and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and glorious joy. For you are receiving the end result of your faith, the salvation of your souls. I'm reading from the Gospel of John. Chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the disciples were together, when, with the doors locked for fear of the Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and sighed. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were, I and put my hand into his side and will not believe. A week later his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though, though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here, see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God and that by believing you may have life in his name. A blessed Sunday, brothers and sisters in the Lord. Blessed Sunday, Dad and Debbie. The theme in our general board of discipleship lectionary starts with a new topic, and we start today with the theme, Revive Us Again, Indescribable and Glorious Joy. So I would like to start with a question. Church, do you need a revival today? If we visit 
the intensive care units in hospitals today, I am pretty sure 100% there is someone who needs to be revived. Someone would need oxygen to be revived or a blood transfusion maybe or medicine to be revived. If God would visit our church today, would God say, Tiffin, Grace United Methodist Church, you need a revival today. Now, if he comes to visit you, Ted, Debbie, and all of you who are watching right now and joining us in our worship today, if God comes to visit you today, what would he say to you? If God comes to me, I am pretty sure he would tell me, Ruby, you really need to be revived. Well, yes, Lord, I do not need to be in the intensive care unit to need a revival. I do need your touch today. I do need your anointing. I do need the joy and the hope that comes from you to keep me sane in the midst of what is happening around. One song that we always sing when I was a young people that was many years ago, and I uh, love to uh, join the evangelistic team in our district. And our evangelists would always want to sing this song. It says, Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. We praise thee, O God, for the Son of thy love, for Jesus, who died and has now gone above. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Spirit, we humbly ask, 
come and speak to us. Speak your words and let your healing be upon us today. In the strong name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Apostle Paul wrote in our text today, in the epistle reading, to the elect believers in dispersion. He wrote to the Christian churches in Jewish dispersion and Gentile converts included. They were the exiles in dispersion in Pontus, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Historians say that this letter was written to them before the open and the systematic persecution of Nero. Basing from these facts, we then can conclude that severe persecution was on its way for all the believers of Jesus Christ when Peter wrote this letter. Believers in this person were afraid of practicing their religion because theirs was the minority religion at that time. So in their situation, it's as if they are asking, what should we do? Should we go underground? Should we hide? Or should we pretend or blend in and forgo what we believe? If we go back to our text last Sunday, and that was Mary Magdalene and the other Mary, the two women went to the tomb early in the morning, and the disciples were not with them. Why? The disciples were hiding. They were afraid. And Peter was among these disciples, right? And who is more credible to encourage the persecuted believers than Peter himself? Why? Because Peter denied Jesus. And he denied Jesus because of his fear of the Jews. Peter hid as with the other disciples because of their fear. Now, in our text, the tables have been turned. Peter writes to encourage the persecuted Christians. Peter must have found the answer to this fear that he once had felt. And so, Peter, in our text, encourages the persecuted believers to, number one, claim their inheritance. Peter tells the persecuted Christians to acknowledge the mercy that God had continued to give to them in the midst of their persecution. And Peter tells them to acknowledge their inheritance of salvation. And this is not possible because this is not made possible because of anything that they have done. This has been made possible not by their own doing, but it is possible because of what Christ has done on the cross for us. And Christ has resurrected. So Peter reminds the people in persecution that they are ears of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And so that is for each and every one of us too today. We need to continue to claim our inheritance, that we are indeed ears of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and we continue to receive His mercy every day. And ours is the inheritance of salvation. And knowing this, our spirit is revived. Now, Peter tells them to claim their inheritance. The second one, Peter, reminds them and tells them to rejoice even in suffering. It is easy to rejoice when everything is good. That is what they say as easy rejoicing. But then maybe there's a difficult rejoicing too. <laughs> and one is threatened, and when one is sad, and 
and suffering and is depressed. Now, we see here that Peter acknowledges the fact that Christians are not immune to trials. We Christian believers of Jesus Christ are not immune to suffering and grief and even death. He tells them, you will suffer trials, but, but, there's a but, says there, even in trials, you can rejoice. To rejoice is possible for the believers of the risen Christ. Amen? Amen. Amen. Why? When we suffer, that's the time that we grow in our faith. Why? When in times of suffering, we believers come out of these problems and suffering and we become refined. We become pure as gold and we are strengthened in our walk with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Our faith matures. One example is Abraham. Abraham grew in his faith in the Lord when he offered Isaac. That's the reason why we call him today as the father of faith. David grew in wisdom when he suffered in the hands of King Saul. But then, because of those sufferings and trials that he had endured, he came out fit to be the next king of Israel. Joseph grew in his relationship with God when he suffered from the mistakes done by his brothers. His brothers sold him, and he was a slave in land not of his own. But then the Lord had blessed Joseph. And time came that he was used to save his family from the famine. Now, Peter, Peter himself suffered, but his suffering made him a strong, stronger disciple of the Lord. We suffer now. We are not immune to suffering. We are not immune to trials and persecutions, but we can. Yes, we can rejoice and praise God. Why? We know that something good can come out of the suffering that we are experiencing right now. Friday, I was able to see the uh, live press conference of the governor of New York, and that's Governor Cuomo. And I was able to join at the end of the press conference. And he ends, before the, the question and answer, and he ends with the story of him having to cancel every time he was invited to see his mom. Well, his mom would say, can you come and have coffee with me? And he would say, yes, mom, I will come. And then when that time comes, something comes up. So he calls his mom, mom, I'm sorry, I cannot come to see you because... Something came up, so I cannot come. Now, he said, because of this lockdown that is happening, he, uh, uh, Governor, Governor Kumu said, he comes to realize the importance of giving time to his mom. He wanted to see his mom, but then he can't. Because we are now not allowed to visit care centers, right? And so now the governor looks forward with hope that one day he will be able to visit his mom again. And he promises he will always find time for her. You remember your mom, Debbie? Something good has come out from this pandemic. We have time to rest. Do you have time to rest? I have a lot of time to rest, right? Because we're always home. Many of us do not take time to rest because why? We are always busy. Many
many of us do not eat right. Why? Because we are always on the go. We are always busy. Many of us do not have quality time. Many of us do not spend quality time with our families. Why? Because we are always busy. And many of us do not have time for the Lord. Because we are busy. Work, 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 and always work. Now work is taken away from us. We have the luxury of staying at home and we are forced to stay put. Governor Reynolds in her press conference also last Friday said, we are in this together. That were her words. Remember that we are in this together. So I would say this pandemic has forced us to see our need to be more connected with one another than ever before, even if we are physically distant. What is the use when we are near one another, but we do not connect? So near, so near and yet so far. So isn't it better when we are even far, but then we are really near one another? And we acknowledge and we see our need of one another. In our suffering and trials, we see our need and our dependence of one another. In our suffering and trials, we see our need and dependence on God. The Israelites were tested in the wilderness, too. And they were disciplined by God. But then they humbled themselves and their faith was restored. So in their suffering, their faith was restored and strengthened. So that is for each and every one of us today. In the midst of the coronavirus, something good is happening. Peter then encourages the people in dispersion who were persecuted to look forward to receiving the indescribable joy. And that's why our theme, it says, indescribable and joy, glorious joy. So I would say, maybe this indescribable joy is the ending of all our suffering here on earth. In the gospel reading, Thomas was there. And in our text, it says, Thomas and the others were blessed because they have seen the Lord, and they believed. But those who have not seen the Lord, but believed in Him, are more blessed. So, that means we are more blessed. Amen? Amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Now, do we often think of, of what we will do or feel or where will we be when life will be over when our life will be over? Isn't it that what we are doing, our joys, our sufferings, our, our pain, these are just preparations of the glorious thing that will have preparations for us, that will happen to us when life will be over. We are just prepared to meet God and receive that glorious joy that He will give to us. Our best life is not our life here on earth. Our best joy is in our best joy is not our joy here on earth. Our best joy now is incomparable to that joy that we will receive when we will come face to face with our God. Life doesn't end 
does not end here on earth. Amen? Amen. We believe that. Yes, we believe that, that our life doesn't end here on earth. So we look forward to our final destination. We look forward to that glorious day when we will receive that indescribable and glorious joy when we are gone with the Lord. Brothers and sisters in the Lord, God has not promised us a life devoid of suffering. What he has promised is that ours will be the salvation of our souls. If we continue, accept Jesus Christ and continue to believe in him as our Lord and Savior. Do we desire that? Do we desire the salvation of our soul? Me, I desire and I thank God every day for the salvation that he has given to my soul. So brothers and sisters in the Lord, Peter comes to encourage all of us, even today. Let us claim our inheritance. Let us rejoice, even if we suffer. And let us continue to give thanks to God, looking forward to that glorious and indescribable joy that God will give us when we meet Him. As we look forward, to that day when the Lord will come and take with him those who are pure and those that continue to believe in him as their Lord and Savior. And all of this is not for anything, but all of this is for the glory and for the praise of our God. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Revive us again. Amen. I have some money. Uh, Announcements and uh, and uh, one other concern. Uh, I I forgot to ask us to, uh, to conclude in my prayer for us all. Uh, Larry Barker, who's in hospice care, we'll pray for the Barker family. And uh, so please uh, be off holding him. As, as you know that it's. This difficult time, family is not able to go into, to physically be there with him, but pray that, pray that he would know that they're in spirit. So my, so, uh, so that's, I'm going to go into the announcements now again, the, uh, Join us on Tuesdays. Well, we want you to join us each Sunday here at 9 a.m. And on uh, online at Grace United Methodist Church at YouTube and and also on uh, Facebook. And then join us on uh, Tuesdays for our prayer warriors time at 5.30 p.m. And our prayer time every Tuesdays at 12 p.m. at at Grace United Methodist Church YouTube and Tip the Grace United Methodist Church Facebook. Now the church is closed for all activities and our preschool is Graceland is closed until further notice. And but you can call our office if you need help and our secretary will get back to you as soon as possible. And then our food pantry is uh, a reminder is open to the community and we want to just thank you and God bless all of our supporters as they continue to share their blessings. And uh, the uh, it's located, the pet food pantry is uh, located between uh, Clear Creek Havana Middle School and the high school in the Clear Creek Havana Family Resource Center. 
I always like to say it's that glorified chicken coop with that clear story from one end to the other. You can. <laughs> that's always that's always that's always reminds me of that. But uh, now you have a better idea, you know. You, you see that clear story from one end to the other. It just reminds me of something like that. So the hours are Monday evenings, four to six p.m. Wednesday afternoons, two to four, and Thursday mornings, eight thirty. A.M. to 11.30 a.m. Thank you, and God bless. Please join us in our final hymn, He Lives, is number 310. Sisters in the Lord, receive God's blessing. Through Christ, God has given us a new birth into a living hope. Rejoice, therefore, for life is stronger than death. Love is stronger than hate. Joy is stronger than sorrow. And the promises of God are true. Amen.